Hello, YouTube, and welcome back to another book review from me, your humble host, Logan Albright. Today, I'm talking about something a little bit different. Um, fans of my channel may remember, back in October, I tried to do an experiment where I found a bunch of horror paperbacks from the 80s and reviewed them uh, to try to celebrate the month of October and the run-up to Halloween. And I'm a fan of horror fiction in general. I like scary books. I don't so much love the kind of cheesy, trashy horror of the 70s and 80s, but they can be fun. And um, they also often have really interesting cover art and uh, really kind of ridiculous plots. And so I wanted to seek out those and talk about them. And nobody watched those videos, but they were fun for me to do. Um, but the thing that I found interesting was how hard it was to find those books. They've sort of disappeared from the used bookstores. I guess the 80s is now a little bit too remote in the past, which is sad to think about, um, that it's become hard to find those books. But I did find this book, Paperbacks from Hell, the Twisted History of 70s and 80s Horror Fiction by Grady Hendrix, which celebrates these very kind of books. And in fact, this book, The Nestling, which I reviewed in October, uh, the cover is featured in this book, and they talk about the author Charles L. Grant quite a lot. So that's pretty interesting. Um, Grady Hendrix is a kind of newer uh, horror fiction writer who wrote a book called Horror Store, which is a kind of satire on uh, Ikea set and kind of taking the idea of Ikea and turning it into a horrifying scenario. I reviewed that book on my channel a number of years ago, and I thought it was fine. Um, it didn't blow me away or anything. A lot of people seem to love it, but I just thought it was okay. Um, he wrote another book called My Best Friend's Exorcism, which I have not read, but which has a very appealing retro cover. So I want to check that out at some point. But he wrote this, and this is nonfiction. This is a kind of uh, research paper and anthology of these interesting old 80s and 70s horror paperbacks. And it's, it's a number of things. It's doing three or four different things, which I think are all really, really interesting. The first thing that it's doing is it's kind of tracing the history of this industry, uh, the publishing industry, specifically the horror publishing industry, and how these uh, various trends within the publishing kind of came to be and how they came not to be in the future. And how, you know, this there was this big wave of horror fiction that came out in the 70s and 80s, kind of in the wake of Rosemary's Baby and... Um, uh, the Exorcist. Those those main two books are the ones that kind of drove this this craze where everybody wanted to publish horror fiction. And then there were a number of kind of micro crazes that happened within that. And then the publishing industry changed and the market changed and the law legal structure changed. And suddenly horror paperbacks didn't sell anymore. And uh, The Silence of the Lambs sort of shifted everybody over into reading thrillers rather than, rather than horror and it all went away and you can't find these kind of books anymore. They just don't write, write them like this anymore. They don't make them like this anymore. They don't publish them like this anymore. And I find all that really interesting. Like the tracing of trends within publishing is kind of a fascinating subject that no one really talks about that much. So I really enjoyed that. And that's kind of the first thing this book does. The second thing this book does is it is a basically a reading list. It is a really useful reading list of um, all these different books, hundreds of them, um, that all are kind of cataloged and subdivided into different genres and micro genres and sub 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 genres like killer crabs that come out of the ocean and kill everyone or skeleton doctors, like really specific sub genres that it talks about. And so if you're interested in this kind of literature, this, uh, this book gives you a cornucopia of interesting things to go and seek out and try to find. And it may not be that easy to find them now, but uh, if you're a collector or if you are interested in this kind of fiction, this book is a fascinating resource on looking for things that you might be interested in. And I am really impressed by the amount of research that apparently went into this book because it seems like the author has read every single one of the books he profiles because he does little plot summaries of them and makes jokes about them. The book is actually quite funny and laugh out loud funny in certain places, particularly the section on clowns is really, really amusing. So, I mean, this is clearly an obsessive guy who loves this fiction and who has collected it for years and who has read all these books. I mean, we're talking hundreds of books in here. Um, I'm really impressed by that. And so if you're interested in delving into this type of fiction, this is a great resource for that. And then the third thing that this book is, is it's sort of a celebration of artists, uh, cover artists in particular, uh, who uh, have provided the really exotic and, um, you know, compelling and out there covers for all these different books for the 70s and 80s, like the, the lurid and the grotesque and just like the amazingly creative covers that these paperbacks have. You don't see covers like that anymore uh, in fiction. And so um, one of the things that the author does is he goes through and 
profiles a number of these artists who were prolific and who did a lot of influential and uh, popular covers and talks about them and their histories and how they got into art and all this stuff. There's little sidebars about these different artists. And the book is absolutely chock full of full double page spreads when we find a good one of you know cover art that you can look at and so just as like a coffee table book of really interesting cover art it's fantastic for that so you know it does a number of different things and it does them all really well and my favorite thing which i won't actually show because youtube can be weird about this sort of stuff the uh, the book that got him into um into the collecting these kind of paperbacks in the first place is called the little people by john christopher and it's about nazi leprechauns and the cover is amazing and it has these like little green leprechauns with a uh, green clothed leprechauns with nazi uh, uh, swastika armbands on uh wielding whips uh, they live in this irish castle it's an amazing like over the top uh, uh concept for a book and there's a lot of stuff like that in here of uh, different lists like insane authors trying to top each other, authors trying to come up with something new and innovative in a, in a flooded market, um, coming up with just the craziest Torah ideas you could possibly imagine and think of. So that's really interesting. And there's a lot of, um, a lot of quotes uh, from both the artists and the authors and the publishers kind of cataloging the history that has gone on here. And I don't know if the author has done original research for this and has gone out and interviewed these people, which would be pretty cool if he did. And I, th I think he probably did because there's some, uh, there's some unpublished sketches, previously unpublished sketches and things like that in here as well that I feel like he must have gotten from talking to people. Or I don't know if he just collected these things from previously published interviews. Um, hard to say, but the, the insight from the actual creators um, both the artists, the writers, and the publishers is really interesting. And one of the appendices in the back of the book has little creator bios of uh, different publishing houses, different authors, and different artists. So you can kind of catch up with them and see what happened to them. Um, it's amazing how many of these like famous publishers are gone now or have been bought by other companies. It's kind of sad, like things like Dell Books or Tor, um, you know, these things that I like read paperbacks growing up, science fiction and fantasy and, and horror paperbacks, you just like you're used to these imprints. Um, they're, they're not there anymore, really. And so um, that's kind of depressing and it's kind of sad. And one of the things I learned while reading this book is there was a Supreme Court case in 1979 that changed the way that uh, publishers had to report their taxes. And prior to that, they were able to write, write off um, unsold inventory and mark down the value of those books that weren't selling. Uh, on their taxes and say, you know, pay less, pay fewer taxes on them. But after this 1979 court case, uh, they weren't allowed to do that anymore. They had to list all of their unsold inventory at full face value prices. And so it became unprofitable to store books that weren't really selling in the warehouses. Um, previously, they would have these kind of mid selling books that were not blockbusters, but they weren't, you know, losing money. They were just kind of selling a, a trickle of copies here and there, and they would publish all these books and just keep them in warehouses, and they'd make them a little bit of money, and it was fine. Um, but after that, they had to switch over to basically marketing only the, the top sellers, only the blockbusters that were going to sell hundreds of thousands of copies um, in order to make money, because otherwise they were going to take a big, big hit on their taxes. And so that's really upsetting in that it kind of really hurt, it hurt creators. It hurt the kind of mid-level authors who were writing interesting books that, but they weren't, you know, Stephen King caliber. Um, and it hurt the pub, the, uh, the consumers as well, because they now have fewer options of books that they can buy and they can only buy the stuff that, you know, are really selling well. So that kind of legal change really hurt the industry or changed the industry in a way that I didn't know about and that I found really interesting. So overall, I mean, I just thought this was a fascinating read. Um, it's really fun to delve into these types of books. They're, they're trash literature, obviously, but um, they're, they're interesting and they're fun and they're hard to find now, but if you are a connoisseur of used bookstores, you may happen upon them every once in a while. But the whole history of it, all of the wonderful art that's included, uh, learning about all these different creators, and, and now I have names that I can look out for if I'm in a used bookstore and I'm looking through the paperbacks, I can see like, oh, I recognize that name from this book. I know this was a big figure. Um, and yeah, the, the micro subgenres are really amusing as well. This, this idea of like, you know, certain very specific animals that were killing people or, um, you know, killer plants or, uh, um, you know, clowns or uh, uh, animated dolls. There's like a whole ventriloquist section of, of evil ventriloquists and evil magicians. Like uh, all that's really amusing to trace. And that's sort of, uh, it's all grouped in those categories. So if you're interested in, in a specific type of story, you can find those. So while 
I historically haven't been an amazingly huge fan of Grady Hendrix's fiction, the one book that I've read of his. This is a, clearly a labor of love. It's a wonderful book. Um, if you're into this sort of stuff, it's just great to like leave out on a coffee table or something and you can peruse the paintings inside because the paintings are just great. Um, and I really got a kick out of it and I learned a lot from it too. So I do recommend if you are into horror fiction at all or if you just like art, if you like good art, um, this is a fantastic book. Paperbacks from Hell by Grady Hendrix. Highly recommended. Tons of fun. And that's my review of that. So I'd be interested to know your thoughts. If you've seen this book around, if you have, have you read um, My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix, please let me know about that in the comments because I'm interested in that book. Uh, it looks cool from the cover, but you know, like I said, I wasn't the biggest fan of horror store. So I don't know if I'll get around to reading it or not. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, as always, please subscribe to the channel and like the video and click the bell for notifications. And I'll be back with you again in about a week's time. I try to upload every Wednesday with another book review. Don't know what it's going to be yet, but it'll be something. I always try to get you guys something out every week. And I really appreciate all the views and I really appreciate all the subscribers. I recently hit 2,500 subscribers on the channel, which is, you know, it's not a huge channel, but 2,500 subscribers is nothing to sneeze at. And I'm really grateful for all the people who um, decided to subscribe and do that. And I hope to see more of you here in the future. And I hope to t interact with more of you in the comments because that's always fun. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back next week and I'll catch you later.